Okay, let's see if this is better. Anybody with me? Hey Jim, can y'all hear me? Hey Debbie. Hi Christina, can y'all hear me now? Is that clearer than before? Got you. Okay, Felicia, thank you everybody for being patient. We had some technical difficulties, but that's part of the things. That's part of solving issues and what you're going to go through. You're going to have some of these issues when you sign with Arise and when you having technical difficulties with your computer, your phone, your internet. It's your business, so you're going to have to find a way. There is no boss to go to, no one to cover for you. You have to cover yourself. So... As you see, we've had 20 something minutes of technical difficulties. I had to find a way and make a way for it, okay? So now that you're all here and I'm back, let's get to it. First thing, how you doing, Laura? First thing is, let's take care of the, how they say it, some house cleaning. For all y'all who saying, I don't wanna clean no house. I mean some rules, okay? So, do not post any client's name. Don't post any recommendations for any clients and do not post any complaints about Arise or Arise clients, okay? That's very important. Remember, we're in a partnership with Arise and its clients. So everyone, including myself, we wanna keep this all professional, okay? So now that we've finished with that, get my notes together, we're just gonna continue on and go right through this, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna to touch on three topics today. So, exactly, Debbie, we definitely have to be professional. So I'm gonna to touch on three topics today. How to choose an Arise client, how to minimize your fears quicker, and scheduling do's and don'ts, okay? Now, if you don't know me, so we're gonna start with that. My name is Kenzel Cozart. I also started where a lot of you were as CSPs moved into becoming an IBO. I was a CSP for three years, decided that it was time for me that I've learned enough and decided to move on to become an IBO. So I own my own company now. The name of my company is NNK Professional Accounts and that's basically it because today it's not about me. Today it's about giving you all this information and getting right into it. I also want everyone to keep in mind that this was brought to us all by the IBO and CSP Hub. They're definitely doing something special to help us all get together, get information, and to provide some resources that some of us would not have, whether it be because of the IBO not doing it, because we can't find it, it doesn't matter. The IBO and CSP Hub is a great place for everybody to find these resources and to connect with each other like we're doing now. I've met some great people, so we're gonna continue this on, okay? The first topic we wanna to touch on is how to choose the Arise client, okay? The thing that's most important to me is you gotta be true to yourself. What I mean by that, know your personality. A lot of people say, no, nah, I know my personality. No, really know your personality. And if you questioning your personality, ask one of your friends, someone you can trust. And since we all have that yes man and that yes woman 
Don't ask them. We all have those people in our lives that they kind of agree with everything we say. They don't want to ruffle our feathers. You have to ask that person who's truly honest with you, truly direct with you. Your personality in this game here is going to either excel you or be your demise. I'm going to say that again. Your personality is going to help you excel or it's going to be your demise. You must be very diligent in picking the right clients based on your personality. Now, the second thing you want to do is you want to make sure you read the opportunity. I don't know how many people I've run into that will call me, ask me a question. Exactly, Wendy. You definitely got to keep it real. And I don't know how many people have come and asked me some questions or information that's clearly in the opportunity. I mean, the opportunity is one of the most important things. This is your business. It's like I said, I keep going back to this. This is not a job. You're not an employee. No one's going to come to you and tell you you need to look into this information. You're about to service a client, so you want to get all the information. The opportunity notice is going to have the facts for the, for the client that you're looking into. It's going to also have the course so that you can work on knowing that budget. I mean, that's in there. Some people is not going to be able to pick a client based on the budget. But I want to say this right out the gate. This is your business. And what I suggest you do is if you see a client that's a little more pricey than the one you reading up on that you're just going to grab, you still want to weigh what fits with your personality. Don't just take a client because the client is X amount of dollars. That's not going to help you. If you take a client solely based on that X amount of dollars, can you be, um, Kim is asking, can I be wireless? Do I have to get a landline? Those are some questions. Well, exactly. Some people would ask that. The answer is no. These clients do not want you to be wireless. And the reasoning behind the wireless, if you don't know, most of us do know is, even though you can take from wireless and you can take from hardwire, it's easier to take information from wireless connections. And it's easier to lose internet connections through wireless than hardwires. So it's because of the connection and it's because of the security why they want to stay away from being wireless. Landline, you definitely need a landline. There is no cell phone. They will find out if you try to use it. There have been people who've tried it in the past. Why mess up your business? Why mess up your name? And why get terminated for something that you can just wait and you can just do it the proper way? Now, Debbie has something perfect, Debbie. Debbie says, if you can't sell, pick a customer service only client. That way you can be successful. Exactly. Those are the things that I'm telling people, which comes to people's personality. If you know your personality and you pick something that's outside of your personality, that's when I say it's your demise. We're not going to mention any client names, but everyone here is intelligent adults. If you're servicing clients, all of this is customer service. If you're servicing clients and it has to do with anything, anything relating to bills or repair, any client in the world, if it's bills or repair, you need very, very tough skin. That's not the client for sensitive people. That's not the client. I mean, if you truly don't like helping people, if you truly don't like talking people back down, that's not the client for you because those people call in with a higher percentage of being angry than being calm because their bill. You're never going to get a call for somebody for your bill or for your a repair and say, you know, I'm happy. I just called to let you know everything's fine. And, um, you know, I just called to let you know my bill is excellent. They're calling in with a problem. So make sure you have tough skin that goes with knowing your personality. Okay. Now, also, when you're picking those clients, 
you want to make sure that you're reaching out to your resources. That's the IBOs, that's CrowdHub, that's other CSPs, and most important, your IBO. You want to make sure because those are the people that can actually assist you with telling you how that client is. Either they've serviced it or they have a CSP that has actually done it themselves. Now, me, I'm a different kind of IBO. What I've done is I've continually taken on clients along with the one I, I'm keeping for the sole purposes of learning those particular clients. Not everybody can do that. So what I suggest is you reach out to the, the resources. The IBO and CSP hub is a great place to meet and greet with people and ask them about particular clients, um, getting emails and exchanging information. You want to make sure that's how you're going about picking your clients. So to recap that part, that first point, you want to make sure you check your personality. Pick your clients based on that. You want to check your budget and you want to check that opportunity notice and then you want to use your resources. Kim asked, how do you meet the so for all of them? Okay, I'm just going to touch on this really briefly. This is what I do. That's very easy, but a lot of people are not multitaskers. Okay? And Melissa asked also, is it possible to work three clients? So I'm going to answer both of those questions at the same time. Absolutely. Would I recommend that? Absolutely not. I did it, and once I committed myself, I was angry that I did that. And the reason why it was doable for me is one client only had a 10-hour minimum, one had a 15-hour minimum, and the other had a 15-hour minimum. So it was only 40 hours. So I was able to pick my scheduling, but that's not good. That's not what you want to do. You want to grab a client that you love, grow with that client, because these clients have in different things that will help you excel, and it's when you're sticking to one client okay so now that we've touched on those three things we're going to move on to the next thing how to minimize your fear much quickly okay this is important to me it's because I've been there in classes I'm I'm outgoing but I know there's a lot of people that shy and you see it all the time and you're going to see this in the classrooms you have people where as soon as the instructor says you have to share like we're doing now, you have to be live, you have to see your face, you have to talk on the mic, you have to show that all of your equipment work, you start seeing people typing in, my equipment doesn't work, my mic's not working today, that's unacceptable. The only way I can put that, that's unacceptable. You're running a business. If you're not ready to run the business, then how do you expect to grow to the point where you actually have other people coming to you for assistance? So the first thing you want to do to get over the fear is face it. If you're afraid of talking on the phone to strangers, a great way to get over that fear before you have to do it for the client is to exchange numbers with the people in the class. In my class, my class was very open. I tell you, I'm outgoing, so I started reaching out to everybody, and because I kept offering my own services and helping and talking, people started reaching out to me. So as I role-played with the other people, I started getting very comfortable with our mock systems. So that takes me into the next one. Try Try to make sure that you're practicing. I mean, don't skip it. That's the time to make all of your mistakes, to laugh at yourself. I mean, like I said, I had a great class, great instructor, but I wasn't going to let anything stop me. You know, it was basically 
This is what I had to do. All of us pick this for a reason. So a lot of things that we don't really think about helps you not even think about the fear. We're always in fear of something. My fear was not being able to take care of my family. So it was either work or not be able to take care of my family, which may make this work easy. OK, now some practical steps for you to do with learning is make sure that you're taking a lot of mock calls with your classmates. Make sure you're reading up on the client that you're actually doing. If you take a client and you know that client's concrete business, someone says put your headset on and role play with yourself in the mirror. I know that sounds strange, but it does work for some people. Absolutely, but all of these things like you're saying, Debbie, is you wanna make sure you're constantly doing this. The more you do it, the easier it gets. No one really wants to talk to others and feel like they don't know what they're talking about. That's why I said the practice comes in handy. And then when you become a CSP, what you want to do is I tell my CSPs, I'm not going to listen to them telling me they can't make it or they can't do it until they take 100 calls. Now listen to me y'all. 100 calls. I've serviced, like I said, at least eight clients on the Arise portal. Eight. At least eight in the four years. I have never reached 100 calls and not have started getting the repeat calls. Meaning, if you take 100 calls, you're going to be afraid when you start taking them. But every call you have problems with, mark down the problem on the side. Mark down the ones that kept you struggling, made you go looking for something. Mark those down because the client wants you to use their tools, but they also want you to use common sense. So it's common sense that the client would want you to take care of a customer quickly. So the client is not going to fault me for using his tools or her tools and also looking at this sticky note and then telling myself, oh, okay, I know exactly where to go. You still want to follow procedure. Okay, Melissa says her fear is navigating the system fast enough. That takes me to my next point, Melissa, so don't worry. We're going to touch that. But as you're taking those calls, you're going to get something. You're going to get anything. My balloon flew away. You don't know where to look. You don't know what to do. But the next time you get that, that's going to feel comfortable to you. That's going to be a call that's longer in your problem call. Because if you service or done a job before, especially jobs like customer service, even though people say everybody's different, everybody's different. But after a while, every call is the same. And when I, what I mean by that, after a while, the calls just come in and you you able to grab those because they're asking the same thing they're all saying the same thing exactly kim it takes practice the call melissa says the calls don't scare me i have 15 years of customer service absolutely melissa and that's what it is it takes practice a lot of people here's what you think of when i call in i call because i need help talking to me with confidence, you talk to me with confidence, then you can tell me anything. When I'm getting stuck, what I use, usually tell clients, I mean customers, is the truth without being, without the whole truth. I'll tell them, right now I'm doing some research because things change and get updated and I wanna make sure I'm giving you the most updated information and I have that written down it's things you now where when you get stuck you want to say that you want to get comfortable with this is something that I have to go check with this department and I need to put you on a brief hold and then those are the times where you want to use your resources my whole thing with everybody getting comfortable with their system and getting over fear quicker it's practicing with your classmates, taking the 
possessions. When the teacher or instructor, whatever you call them, ask for volunteers, jump out there. The more you jump out there, exactly, time stalling comment, exactly. Someone, uh, um, Debbie says, I used to make my family, my dad, my brother role play so I could practice also. They was a huge help. Exactly. Only thing, everybody, you want to make sure, the reason why I also say people in the class, people in the class will have an idea of the kind of systems you have. And when I role played with my family, my family was off the hook, as they say. They was giving me stuff where I was like, come on now. Come on. They was just too overboard with the kind of practice they was trying to give me. But yes, you want to focus in with more people. Last is topic of getting over your fear quickly. You can't be too hard on yourself. There is a time frame for you to learn. They expect you to come out of class with information. They do not expect you to come out of class and say, I don't know anything because that's a disgrace to your teacher, and how did you pass? So don't try to skate through class. Do all the work. Do all the extra stuff on your own. Exactly. Take on um, role plays serious. It's definitely education. And when you realize the stuff at the end of the day, everything that you've done, you want to see what you've done well. You know what you've done well. See what you got stuck on. The stuff you got stuck on, once again, use your resources. Come back to IBO and CP Hub. Come back and ask them the questions in there. Use Crowd Hub. You go back to your IBO. Uh, my, in my instructor opened up working class. Jim said the working class is really important. Definitely. Like I said, you want to use all of those. Felicia said something also. But Felicia said, contrary to popular belief, most customers are pretty easygoing. Absolutely. The only reason I don't share that with the with um, CSPs is because if you can handle the irate customer, everybody else is going to be a breeze. My hardest thing, I was looking forward to my first irate customer. I was looking forward to my first challenge because I, once I got over that, that first person who got me stuck, I was going to do my research, do my in, listen to, here's another thing really quickly for y'all. Videos. People do videos as a joke. My family laugh because I watch videos all day. I go to YouTube and I watch videos all day. I watch videos of irate customers. I see what the person said. I listen to stuff like that because I see what the person said and I realize where they made the customer angry. And once I started doing these particular things and as every summing this section up, taking everything serious with your practice, 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 it made my fear just go out the window. The customers are calling in to be helped. And 99% of the time, I help them. The one percent I can't help, either through my lack of knowledge or because they was too irate, the I still did my best. I still offered them my best foot forward. I didn't give up. I didn't hang up the phone. I didn't get flustered. I didn't fall into commenting back with them, debating with them. Customers all always right because there's always ways to de-escalate a customer or pass the customer to your supervisors when necessary if you're having problems. That's how you get over your fear, okay? You want to practice, 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 and then use your resources so you can take care of that, okay? Now, we're going to keep this, you know, we're going to keep this moving on, and we're going to go to the one that's very easy. I mean, none of us should be having this problem, but I see that people people have continually have people continually have the same problem because they're continually doing the same thing. So I'm going to give you a tip that I did, but you use it anyway to but this is what you're doing for scheduling do's and don'ts. 
The don't is very easy. Do not schedule any hours you cannot service. Don't guess about this. Don't play around with this. I see people treating these schedules like because I can pick my own hours and I can do this and I can do this. It's my own time. Taking this very lightly. When you drop an hour uh, interval under two hours, it's counting against your commitment adherence. And those things will slowly but surely get you turned. Okay? Kim put the thing you have to remember that the chance of you ever having to talk to that same customer again is almost zero. <laughs> exactly. So, like I said, you want to make sure you're not scheduling any hours that you definitely can't take, okay? Don't pick the hours you cannot service. When you're picking your hours, I don't know your schedule, but you know your schedule very well. Don't pick no hours around kids going to school, okay? Like in the morning, some of us get up, we fix breakfast, we do whatever. We got a morning routine with our children, husband, wife, it doesn't matter. You got a morning routine, you know how long that takes. You got to get your house empty. You're not really that morning person. Don't pick those hours. You will be responsible for those hours. And contrary to belief, what people tell you is I never go on the best case scenario of people saying, well, they've dropped an hour in under the two hours and they never had problems. It starts counting against you. Who's going to use a contractor that continually does not fulfill their obligations? This is your business. Take it very seriously. Some of you that are CSPs will grow to be IBOs and you want to already have good practices in place. OK, so this is what I did when I started. The first thing is all of us that have had nine to five jobs. Let's see some of these questions here. Debbie put I have a huge calendar desk and all my appointments are highlighted on it including my dad's appointment I see it around exactly Angel said something exactly dependability be dependable I, I mean it's just that I mean these things are in half an hour increment I mean I've maneuvered all kinds of things to make sure I can do the half an hour and then put the other hours up for swap a rise portal is a great place for resources and learning how to do this scheduling but back to the tip I'm telling y'all. We picked these hours based on how we used to be at This is where I messed up. So this I learned the hard way. I picked right out the gate as soon as they gave us hours. I seen these hours. I picked them. I was like, I'm going to work on, um, I think when they start 15, then they go to 30, then they go to uh, 40. When I got started, I got lucky enough that they needed a lot. So you know how they start you off and you got like 10 or 15 hours? I didn't have that. Hours was open for those 10 hours, and then they open it for something like 60 hours. So I took four. The problem was on some of the days, I took like 8 in the morning, 1 p.m., and then 3 to 9. I'm going to do this. I didn't make any schedule for bathroom breaks, eating. So during that 8 to 1, I was, I was a mess. I was getting frustrated for, I'm still learning, so customers was frustrating me. I was frustrated because I can't get up from my desk. You, you, you can't put your calls on hold and just go use the bathroom, cook a meal, get caught, any of these things. All of that frustrated me and made me think my, um, that this wasn't going to work for me. So in sitting now and trying to figure out what I, do what I did for the first couple of days after that was I picked my schedules in one hour increments I'll pick an hour take a break I don't care how long your break is half an hour one hour two hours I don't care the first couple of days I would do six and seven hours but I would do it over the whole course of the day by picking some picking an hour taking break Picking an hour, taking break, hour, break, hour, break. I did that for a couple of days so I could get used to sitting in my chair, not talking to nobody, not getting up things we're used to doing at the office. Then the next day that got comfortable, two, maybe two days, 
Then I went to two hours, did that two hours, took a break, two hours, break, two hours, break. Then the next day, three hours, break, break, break. Up to where I'm at now, I could literally sit at my desk six hours with no problem and take my hours. And like someone said, picking the minimum. That's also true too. So what I did is just like Kim said, you want to make sure you get the minimum. Let's go back a couple of questions. Angel had, but things do have things that we can't control. So be dependable so that when stuff happens, they know you are usually on. Point. Exactly. Things do happen. So I'm not saying what a person has to do when life happens to them. I'm saying scheduling around the things you know. You can't prepare for someone being sick. You can't prepare for something happening to somebody at school, an accident. You can't prepare for your internet going down, your phone going down, thunderstorms. You can't prepare for all of these things. But you can prepare for, oh, I set my schedule for 9 a.m., but you know you take your child to school at 8. You usually get there at 8.30, and usually you get back and have 15 minutes to spare and this particular day traffic happens when you could have picked something that gave you time to get back as well as time to make sure that you have your proper hours. So also, I always recommend that people allow an hour break. There's always that long call that will kill your one. <laughs> exactly, Angel. Definitely. What do you do if you are sick? Who do you contact? Melissa, all these things you want to go to Ava. So any information you get from IBO, C, another P, other people, you always want to go to guys and to Ava and get questions because then you're covered. But from what this is what I did when I was a CSP. The first thing I did is contact my IBO because your IBO is going to get something about commitment adherence, letting them know that you didn't service an interval. Not the ones where you put in for a swap, but right now, p.m. and I get sick and I just drop it or I just don't show up. So the IBO is who you want to tell. Going to Ava for that, it's really nothing they're going to do for you. Arise only assists you when you have a rise problem, problem with their software, or problems with their systems. You can go there. And you can put that in, but after that long wait, you're definitely going to get them telling you, even if you put in the request, they're going to tell you that they only give waivers for those kind of things. Now, they do let you get and a break in your servicing without dropping you if you put in for that. But you once again, you want to go to Arise because it's different time frames that they will give you I've been able to take two weeks, but put in a request and let them, and then they gave me that two weeks without dropping my soul. And then my IBO also knew that so that you're not messing up your IBO and you're not messing up your own name. Kim, I spent the last two weeks dropping hours at the last minute because of bad storms, knocking out internet, sick family. I Swapped as many hours as possible. There's just time that a huge crack of lightning made me shut down. Suddenly it happens. If you're reliable, the rest of the time, those times won't mess you up. Exactly. And here's another tip. I know we don't like to do it this way, but I do it this way because this also, if you're starting to see that you've had a lot of misfortune, because you know a ride counts like your last four weeks, so it'll take you about four weeks to get yourself back out of their bad numbers back into your good numbers. What I do is I take a lot of my hours at the end of the week. Then during the beginning of the week, I sit there and I will take hours as they come. Like I'll take in half an hour and then while I'm sitting on my computer not having a problem, I'll go to my click more hours and I'll click another half an hour and I'll click another half an hour because you want to just try everything possible not to have that life happens but since this is a business that's just how they're going to look at it we're 
that life happens, they're going to look at it in the long run. Life happens, and eventually they're going to drop us because they are running a business. And every time we do that, we're putting strain on the clients and on our eyes, and they're trying to keep their name good. We're trying to keep our names good as a C, and IBOs are trying to keep their name. So while they're trying to keep their name at the top of the list, as they say, you know what, all rolls downhill, it's going to stop at the last person, which is the CSP. IBOs are not going to keep taking hits for CSPs, and Arise is not going to keep taking hits for CSPs and IBOs. So you just want to make sure that you're doing everything you possibly can do to make sure that you're taking those proper um, breaks, setting up those schedulings, you know, as with the proper amount of time. And I can't stress this enough for everybody. Use your resources. I mean, really, really use your resources. If you're not using your resources, then you're, you're throwing away one of the most important things and, and um, services that you have at your hand at your disposal, and it's free. I mean, why not use a resource that's free? And I'm going to put something up for y'all so that y'all can, me one moment I'm gonna type this up on here for y'all so you can actually go there because this is also going to be a resource for y'all to go to give me one moment and if you have any questions feel free to post them now and I will definitely do my best to answer them but let's keep most of the questions on the topics um that was discussed but if you do have a question that really just Bothering you and you haven't gotten an answer, I'll do my best to answer it. Is that correct? Yes. So make sure you're going there for a rise client reviews. Once again, you want to keep going to the IBO and CSP hub. They the one who allowed me to actually bring this session to you. They have other sessions. These sessions will be available on the Hub, Google, Twitter, YouTube. I mean, use your resources. You know, I hope today you got some value. Like I said, it's not about me and my company. It's about helping CSPs get the proper information because IBO, and as all the IBOs on here know, the better you do, the better we do. Without y'all, we are nothing. So all you CSPs makes it possible for IBOs to grow. So all CSPs, I want to thank you for attending this session. And I want to thank all the IBOs and Felicia, everybody for joining in and all of your questions. I thank you all. You have a great night. Any questions before I sign off? Okay, I'm going to give one minute in case someone's typing, and then I'm going to let y'all all get back to your productive evenings. Thank you all. I appreciate you all. I don't see that anybody has any questions. And once again, I appreciate all the support on the session. Everybody have a fantastic evening. Go be great.